Uh, all right, let me give let me give everybody a quick icebreaker. Would you rather Adele yell loudest fuck in your ear or have a low credit score? I already have a low credit score. Right. Like, give me a Adele. All right. <laughs> Does she one. yell like one word or does she like sing a whole like song? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like that. <laughs> you probably I'll, go death. By shit, I, I'll take the. Give me a deal. I'll, I'll learn sign language. At least I can sue her <laughs> ass for some money later. Right. There you Damn go. Drum, drum thinks of everything. Well, everybody who just joined us today, thank you so much. Please remember to like and subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined to do so. Or if you want to check out our other playlists, we do plenty of reviews. Currently, we're doing The Last of Us and Hello Tomorrow. Uh, and this discussion we're going to be talking about oop, Benitas just dipped but anyways in this discussion we're going to be talking about video game adaptations uh, so we have a wonderful cast of characters here we have my co-host and partner and sexy guy Dylan uh, we have Black Benitas with us channel regular and then we also have Miller uh so everybody um and miller sexy as well so everybody um yeah let's let's start with you dylan and just lead us around what is your hot take this podcast Ooh, kinky uh <laughs> i have a question for you guys do you think video games do a better job adapting from movies or do you think it's vice versa i'll oh. i'll let i'll let uh miller open this up I mean, there have been brilliant movie adapted video games, like f from back to like the Capcom Disney games on like the NES even like we've we've had fantastic movie adapted video games before. I think it just comes down to quality and timing uh, in the case of like adapting a movie to a video game. Oftentimes you want to sort of strike while the iron is hot. So you don't have very long to develop the game. And especially I think that's. In today's landscape, it's impossible in like sort of like a spoiler culture, you know what I mean? Like to to release like all of these secrets of this movie that you're working on to a game studio opens the door up to all kinds of leaks. And I don't think that it's as much of a uh, it's as worthy of a risk for them these days. Um, but as far as the other way around goes, um, I don't think there's been so <laughs> I don't think there's been as many uh, examples of good outcomes but I don't think it's something that um, is sort of inherent to that process. You know, I think it's just, mm. it just comes down to like that license fee, essentially, you know, paying to be able to use that IP in your game, not to mention how it uh, negatively impacts like catalog sales in the future when you can't sell it anymore. Cause the license runs out. It just doesn't, it's just rarely seen as like a worthwhile investment to dump like a huge budget into that. So it's garbage in, garbage out. You give it a little micro budget and you get a little, you know, turd of a game, unfortunately, more often than not. Mm. Yeah, that's really... <clears throat> well, well, I don't know, Jerome, are you ready to answer? What was the or... question? Damn it. All right, Del Dylan, go ahead and ask. <laughs> the he, question he was, was busy um, with his camera. Do, uh, do you think uh, movies do a better job adapting from video games or vice versa? I mean, no, not necessarily. I think when it comes to adapting from video games, I think the the TV show format is like what's key for them because a movie, you can only tell so much in a given hour. So it's like if I only got an hour and 50 minutes to say something and to give a full story, it, say for instance, if the game, let's just take Double May Cry. It's five Double May Cry games. If you try to put that in one movie, you're going to, either somewhat do justice but you're going to cut a lot of content or you're just going to fail all together so it's i think movies tackling like adaptation of video games i think they need to stop it or at least give it longer run times because something ain't correlating because we haven't been getting quality to match the video games mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's some um, it's some Oh, his cameras. Okay. It, sometimes it's a little bit difficult too, because it depends if you're taking on a franchise and you're trying to. Is is Jerome still talking? No, it's 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 freezing because <laughs> Riverside is trying to control the webcam. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All uh, right. Well, anyway, just, <laughs> yeah, just yeah. keep going, Acker. <laughs> well, sometimes it, it is a little bit difficult especially when you're adapting a franchise and so and, and a franchise with like heavy history behind it as well um 
I think it's a lot to tackle and I think it's a lot to balance in a movie. I feel like the way to go a franchise, especially is like a TV adaptation, if done right, with a good studio. Um, but it's like there's a lot of uh, politics involved of not not politics, politics, but I mean, like there's a lot of, you know, just jargon um, like Miller was talking about, like the licensing and stuff like that. So really some some things can just straight up be adapted. Uh, it might be too much. I don't know. Um, but now we're getting Prime. Prime is trying to tackle Halo, which was ass. Uh, but they're also trying to tackle God of War. Um, good luck to them with that. Um, but it's also how you formulate the story, too. Um, it, it can be quite difficult to deal, again, with a huge franchise. Like with God of War, it's going to be set in the Viking era rather than the Greece era. And it's going to have flashbacks to the Greece era. So that's their way of storytelling. Um, it's also difficult because you can't just have nonstop action. You need You need emotional action as opposed to just always action. And so there's some things that could tackle that brilliantly. I think like The Last of Us, we've been reviewing that. Um, they took a lot of action scenes away, but they replaced with emotional action. I think that's even more entertaining for me, right? I think that's actually more memorable. Um, I think it's it's multifaceted. Uh, but for the most part, I think your, your safer bet is probably a TV adaptation because you have a little bit more, more room to breathe. Um, Fair points. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, honestly, it's it. I don't think every video, and I feel how about this, like with anime too? I feel like not everything needs to be retold. I think if you have a very fleshed out uh, story, I don't think it really need or warrants, unless you're doing like a spin off or something. Um, obviously, there are better adaptions than others. And Personally, I think I think live stream or not live action adaptations are a little weaker. I think animated adaptions are a little bit uh more more on point with what the creatives of you know the games wanted wanted it to be. Um, but yeah, you guys all made some great points, and yeah, I definitely think it comes down to like like Akram was saying, like the politics. I think there's definitely like you know some executive involvement that that kind of hinders Arm Miller. Yeah, yeah, hinders what the the creators want to um what were some of your guys like uh or which which uh franchise do you think were like i guess on the stronger side of adaptions uh, uh, like so far mm -hmm. uh, i mean obviously we just we're reviewing the last of us and i think that's a great adaption but well and that has a unique thing to it too where it's very story driven it's like it, you know if it feels just right for television, it, you know, I, I don't, I, I think again, God of War, it's going to be really hard. Halo, like I could see it being, they, they botched it completely, but I felt like they had different people involved. It probably would have been really decent. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't, I know there's the stigma with video game adaptations, but there's some good ones still. And there's some bad ones. I think it's just like any movie. I think it's just a regular thing. Um, if you look back to time, like if you you were mentioning something before everybody joined us, you were saying something. Do you think that video game adaptations in the past, like in 1980s or 90s, were better? I don't know. It just depends on whether they took themselves serious enough or or the source material. Like Sonic, I loved Sonic the Hedgehog, but it's not like this serious ass movie. You know, it felt like its own thing. I mean, they right? weren't serious games, to be fair. Like exactly, I think totally, right. it hit that. Mm. it hit the right note yeah right exactly and then hopefully mario ends up being really mm -hmm. cool um mm -hmm. probably a sonic like type of vibe to it with the tone uh but yeah so he asked the question so what what do you think what's like a notable highlight that you've seen recently or, or like well, in the past some of my favorites um I think The Witcher, at least the first season, I forgot about that. Was strong. Yeah. I think the second one was kind of mid, but I think I think it was still compelling. Um, I think they did they they had a sweet spot where like they still kind of um, you know brought in some of the the player uh, demographic, but you know also kind of like those people that just like scroll through Netflix. I think it was a sweet spot. Um, uh, I think I also like Detective Pikachu a lot. Even though I forgot all it about was, that. It was yeah. kind of, it was a weird, like, I don't know. Even the, like some people were ragging on like the CGI, but I thought it was fine to be honest. And it didn't take itself seriously like Sonic too. Um, mm -hmm. 
How about you, Jerome? Um, so my favorite like adaptation, it might get like some pushback, but it's Alita Battle Angel. I totally oh, forgot about people that. People yeah. stop shit on my favorite movie. <laughs> shit. Like, it, it was wait hold on wait wait was that a, that but that's a manga adaptation right no it has a game oh but wow. the game was pulled from the manga too yeah yeah so it was originally a manga series then transferred to a game then yada 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 the movie mm-hmm. but it did the source okay. material justice that mm-hmm. even though this the cgi wasn't the best it, it was Way better than what I thought it was. Like, I thought it was going to be a low budget indie field type of movie in terms of mm-hmm. production standpoints, but it hit everything out of the park. And that Detective Pikachu, the Sonic franchise, one and two, even though two, eh, it was hit or miss at points, but those three are my tops. Yeah. You know what's interesting? You mentioned, again, that's from a manga, but Dylan also mentioned The Witcher, but that's from the book, not actually the Good game. Point. I'm I, and I'm wondering, like, I think The Witcher from the game would also be pretty cool. Like, they'll they'll probably do it justice mm-hmm. because the games are well known and they're great games. But as for Alita, though, I don't know about the game. I never knew Alita had a Time game. Um, Remember the Prince of Persia adaptation? True, uh, with Jake Dylan. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And Gemma Art, yeah, if you remember, yeah, yeah. then you deserve your AARP card. <laughs> Bro, the Witcher. I mean, not the Witcher. The Prince of Persia adaptation was so... Oh, my God. It didn't do justice. It was okay, but it didn't do justice. Yeah, I forgot. I think the CGI wasn't bad. Uh, that's the only thing I can recall. It's like the dagger. Wasn't it called the dagger of mm-hmm. time or something? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, and Jake Gyllenhaal was involved. I completely forgot about that movie. Um, well, okay. Well, what do you guys, uh, Jerome said he likes Alita, which is, oh, all right. I love the Assassin's Creed movie. Okay. That's my hot oh. take. Fight me. But you're going to Loki Shay Alita, but you like the Assassin's Creed. <laughs> well, go sit on the rock somewhere. Listen, this is so a war right now. Notorious for hot takes. <laughs> right. <laughs> what did you guys think of the Assassin's Creed movie? Because, you know, another th- cool thing is when you have a huge franchise and you don't try to adapt the actual characters, you make it a part of the universe somehow, right? And I think for its own story, I thought it was all right. Um, and the tone too was pretty interesting. It's, it's actually pretty different from the games, the way how to handle the tone. Um, it was a vibe for sure. Uh, what is your one minute review? I never saw it. <laughs> okay, that's why it. I never saw it either. <laughs> it's bad, it was really. Let's just right. say that. Well, let's, it just was consider, let's just say I won this. <laughs> <laughs> it was so amazing. Oh, Bro, so if good. nobody saw go. it, that means you didn't win shit. Like. <laughs> Listen, it's the next Godfather. Um, all right, so are there anything, like any games that you think should be adapted for television or film? that are worthy and you think that yeah so okay but of course everyone will always say there's so many but also who do you think will handle the adaptation the best what studio oh listen that's a whole different discussion but I do want to see Double May Cry especially Double May Cry 1 and 2 adapted into the series because you can you can do that a dark gritty series like that you can hopefully Mm -hmm. try to pull it off with the right studio because some studios don't need to handle certain genres but that's a different discussion. But yeah, if we could get a Double May Cry series, or like, let's just say we get a a live action Castlevania series, I wouldn't mind those two. Like a live action. Castlevania would be cool. Uh, there is an anime though. What, well, do, what there do you is think an about anime the anime now? Both? I do have it on the my anime list here, and it is a very top tier. Well, I think it's a strong adaptation. I don't know how Jerome feels. It's really popular. Well, I love it, yeah. especially because they're about mm-hmm. to release the second one, which takes place in the mm-hmm. future when they had a kid and stuff. So, I'm all for the Castlevania franchise. Yeah, the first season. Okay. Was, I mean, it was only like four episodes, but it already like hooked me from the beginning, and I think that just that that trio of characters. Um, they had just such a great chemistry together and even Dracula, like he was such a, like a, a sympathetic villain. And I think it just worked really well. Mm-hmm. All right, Miller, you're up. Uh, I would love, I'm surprised <gasps> it's never happened. 
because it seems like such a perfect match, but I would love to see like a Xenoblade anime. Oh my. Like, yes. where oh, is it? That matches. Yeah, like, that matches. I mean, it's, they write it like an anime, like, like the way that they do the scripts and everything. They hire anime writers to do it. Like they collaborate with a lot of anime production staff. Um, it's something that the series has been known for from day one. So it's just crazy to me that they've never taken it in that direction. They've never even done like a long form manga or anything. Um, I, as much as like my favorite studio is trigger and I would love to see that together. I don't think it'd be the best fit. I think OLM would be a really good studio for it. Um, but I wouldn't shake my nose at really any of the big guys today. Like, um, bones would be good. Mappa. Why not? Mm. It's just crazy to me that it hasn't happened yet. Like, I mean, we've gotten anime like- adaptations of like, um, God eater, and like a, a a few in the last couple of years that are really unremarkable. Like they just did the, the, um, the God, what's the English title? Like the Seiken Densetsu, like the, um, <laughs> what the heck? Damn that? it, Vanitas, help out. No, 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 no. Sort of mana. <laughs> They're doing that like Sorry. sort of mana <laughs> anime now. It's God awful. Um, like it was on a lot of people's like worst of the year lists. Damn. Um, it, you know, so. it, there's good and bad, unfortunately. Like I grew up with like the Sakura Wars anime. Um, they did a lot of different series. Like they did some OVAs and some movies sort of adapting different stories from the games. Um, so doing their own original side stories here and there. And they use like the full cast from the games. And some of those are brilliant, like extremely good. So, I mean, you know, it, it's a mixed bag. Well, I'll tell you, though, what my favorite movie is since we've already moved on. Mm. My favorite game adapted film is actually DOA Dead or Alive. Oh, yes. <laughs> DOA Dead or they Alive. They did adapt the Dead or Alive game series into a very micro budget film. I almost want to say Constantine Films did it, I think. But um, it stars a bunch of television actors and models. And... Um, it, they go for a very small scale story. Um, you know, the dead or alive franchise, they, uh, it's a tournament invitation that goes out to the world's fighters and they all get transported to an Island and they get paired up there where they have to duke it out. And the winner ends up with a huge prize, but it never quite goes that easy. And, uh-huh. um, it was fun. They had like Devin Aoki. Um, it's like, uh, she was like the first, um, like Japanese American supermodel, uh, she played Kasumi. She's not a great actress. Nobody in the film is really a great <laughs> actor, but it's just a lot of fun. Like it, it, it's not a great adaptation. It's not a great film, but it's a good time. You know, like I think that's sort of what a lot of those adaptations are going for, at least some of the older ones. So it really does harken back to like Mortal Kombat, you know what I mean? And and that sort of feel, uh, that sort of um, take on the adaptation. And it nails it. It really nails that feel. And it was, I think, the last time they ever really did that. You know, we, we go for a lot of gravitas now and like a very mm. measured take on the source material. And this just had a silly good time. And it was it was a lot of fun. Wait, is that the one with the like the on the beach with the titties out and it was like adults only? Is that the is that the same game I'm okay, talking about? Okay, they do have a beach volleyball spin-off. Uh yes, okay. that is the same franchise. Of course they do. Oh, they, yeah, even, I was like... they even have a scene in the film that references that, and it's quite fun. Oh, okay. Of course they do. Yeah, because I remember I, I was like True. Yeah, I was like, oh shit. Okay. That brings back memories, I guess. <laughs> um, all right, so do you think I actually now that you mentioned that Miller I actually feel like perhaps anime handles adaptations a little bit better I mean it depends too because like some games are like very anime-esque anyways it's like like you said they it's a, the writing it's a medium is, like it any other seems like, it, like um, yeah, yeah. there's been a lot of anime based on books um, books that you know don't really yeah. cross the pond in the same way that the anime does so you don't really have a mm-hmm. point of reference with the source material but a lot of them have been good and a lot of them have been bad, mm. you know, right. like it, it happens. Mm. I'm surprised no one mentioned cyberpunk. Now about to say so. I mean, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but, you know, cyberpunk is very, you know, stylized ultra violence. So I think 
I they think did that, a really that's a good, good example of like yeah. pairing. And I, and I think this is a, an underrated aspect of the conversation across all of these adaptations is pairing the right creatives with the right IP because you had studio trigger who are known for ultra stylized visuals mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and like um, a very yep. sort of high fidelity take on action. And you, that they're the perfect partner to cyberpunk as an IP. Um, so when I talk about like, Oh, doing a Xenoblade anime, like I think that could just as easily flop with the wrong people behind it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No matter how easy it might seem. Um, I mean, I grew up with like, um, they, they've always done like, um, dragon quest anime. Yeah. And, and well, most of them have been adapted from manga that sort of pull from the games. Some very literally some as side stories, um, some is like their own original Dragon Quest style journeys as if they were their own game. Um, and one just finished a remake and it was brilliant. Um, Dragon Quest, The Adventure of Die. Yo, um, it was like 50 plus episodes, but it was worth it. Th- yeah, they did uh, eight cores of it. So it mm-hmm. lasted like just, a, I think, a hundred even actually. Yeah. And it was damn good. Like it really captured that feeling. It was, again, a good marriage between creatives and ip which it's so fundamental because i look at like the resident evil films and oh, to me man. that's a mismatch Here you know what go. i mean it's like you have <laughs> i i don't think like it's inherently like some sort of perverted creative process to have like a disdain for the source material as stupid as that might sound i think you could maybe come up with something cool you know what I mean? And I'm, frankly, I'm sure there's been a lot of examples of that throughout history. They just don't publicize it. You know what I mean? But it was so clear that they like did not like the source material and were really embarrassed by it consistently, which was odd considering the tone that they then struck. I don't know. It. I, I think a perfect example of wrong marriage between uh, talent and IP. Like, why is that a vehicle well, yeah, for I'm, Mila Jovovich's career? That's such an odd choice of IP. <laughs> I love Mila Jovovich. Terrible combination. Well, and it's also probably a product of its time, too. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't have to be, but it, it's very 2000s tacky. Um, Paul W.S. Anderson, right, was the one who directed it. Who was and Mila yeah, Jovovich's he got married to husband. Mila. And she yeah, 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 played yeah, exactly. in that nut-ass Monster Hunter movie. Like, everything. <laughs> true. By the same people. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, yeah. it's a trend, man. Yeah. It's a trend. Monster it's Hunter, a beautiful world That's the... that they just shit on their source material. Like, it's a it's a guilty pleasure, but I do like Jason Isaacs and then like Akram knows I always love that one scene with the zombie when they're like trying to teach him how to like use a Ubik, Ruby's cube or something. That's how we look at each yeah. other when there's a problem. And yeah. Dr. Isaacs is like <laughs> as the guy is dying. That's how I was looking at Riverside like ten minutes ago. Right. <laughs> Riverside, no, sorry so everybody like, for that. Even like bad adaptation, I think, have like little guilty pleasures in them. But you gotta think oh, of yeah. this. Look at yeah. a movie like okay, since we brought up Resident Evil, think of the Underworld series since they was mirroring each other on release days. The Underworld series, they you could tell that they pulled from the novels way more than anything Resident Evil did. And it showed in how they produced the product. Yeah, the Underworld series wasn't the best. But when you look at it at its core, when you, all the movies get stacked up together, you can look at, okay, had a beginning, middle, and end. That's coherent enough. Where it's like, I can respect the effort put into it. But when you look at Resident Evil, it's just like, let's just throw shit on the wall. Let's smear it around a little bit. And if the shit don't stink enough, let's just take a pile of monkey shit and smash it again. <laughs> like, Great analogy. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> well, I think it's, yeah, it's you got to, to all directors and people who write in the script, you got to be willing to respect the source material. You can't just be like, oh, I'm going to sign up for this for the money. And then get defensive with the audience shit on it. If you're going to enter something, you got to enter it with a passion, at least somewhat to what you're going to enter. Or at least do research. You don't even have to have passion. Do research. The bare minimum research or the quick Google search can tell you X, Y, and Z. Let me ask you guys, do you think certain franchises like Resident Evil are kind of set up for failure? No. Because there's so many bad adaptations? Or do you think it just depends on... Oh, man, you know, it shouldn't be. Like you said, directors. They just keep fumbling the bag. Yeah, they're over 3. Like, I mean, 
are you guys like, is anybody on this panel like a big Resident Evil fan? I like them. They a guilty pleasure, but shit on them all day, every day. <laughs> well, I was thinking like where, cause I, I don't the fans like really like the CG movies that they're doing now in Japan. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That Why? Is true. Yeah, yeah. Those aren't great either. <laughs> I, think it's a I, never understood. I watched two of them. I'm like, the, what? Uh, what am I missing? I think it's they, like they a remind me very pleasure. much of like Advent Children, where it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like the fans swear by it, but like if you're not mm-hmm. one, don't watch it. You talking about Final Fantasy? Yeah, it's, uh, we, we could dive into that a whole different time, but mm. that's a whole <laughs> different discussion. But I think it's like a guilty pleasure well, for them over there. Like what we what we find disdain in or dislike for some reason is popular over there, and it's like I guess is how they grew up. Mm-hmm. So many different styles. It's like, it is what it's a it pop is. Culture preference. Yeah. If if a stick is stick. So mm-hmm. since they're the originators for so much stuff, I guess they sometimes get immune to like shitty things because they get so much media pumped into them on a daily basis. It's like, okay, it's here. It's enjoyable. I spent 30 minutes watching it. Next. Mm-hmm. As opposed to us, we get it um, late. And then when we do get it, it'd be so chopped up that we'd be like, no, nah, I'm good. I, I, I think it's really, uh, when it comes down to it, when someone is presented with, you know, you, you are going to be the head of this project and you have to adapt this and, and you have to make everybody happy. I think you, you truly can make everybody happy, but I think whenever you approach a film, I think the number one thing that's really important is to show truth. And I think if you respect someone's franchise and work and there's a huge fan base, there's some truth to it and i think when they are like they reinvented so many characters in the resident evil movies that's when we're like okay this tone is kind of tacky and these characters don't fit but they're just tacked on to this and it's not well put together i think a true adaptation would see the flaws of a video game any particular one and they'll find a way to humanize certain characters because sometimes that's very hard to do in certain games but when you could do that and and you strike a beautiful balance uh doing that and paying homage to the franchise as well um you have something that's like magic and we we, we're not seeing that really these days um you know magic could happen like again in sonic or mario right I, i don't think there's again it's not being it's not too serious, but something like The Last of Us. I mean, yeah, again, I really love The Last of Us. I'm a big fan of The Last of Us. I think Craig Mason is doing a brilliant job and he's working with Neil Druckmann. Like, I wish more projects did that because um, you have to go about it really delicately as well, you know? And if you don't do that and you just rush it, um, we get shitty projects or products that are probably iconic just because people love making fun of them, right? Uh, but not because we felt anything for them. And I think that's the problem. I think the Mario movie back then in the 80s, there's like a lot of people that love that movie. That movie didn't give a shit about Mario whatsoever. But they love it because it added something. It, it, it wasn't true to the actual source material, but it added something. And we don't, you know, I, I don't think, I think in hindsight now people aren't hating that much on Mila Jojovich's Resident Evil series. I think well, they're, they're just dead. like... we're like, okay, on right. You know, like... Oof, yeah. Like I think when that wound was still open, I think people were very passionate about it because it felt like there was mm. something at stake. Like maybe you could shit on it enough that they would go away, but like they're gone now. So I think people have kind of made their peace with it. And it's a matter of like, it, 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 was, it was what it was <laughs> moving on. I mean, what I, about Raccoon City, Miller? I mean, no. look at it this way, though. Like <laughs> another good example of um, an, ad- an adaptation that didn't like its source material, Silent Hill. And oh, Silent Hill came up with something really cool. Like, despite yeah. that, I think it made a really cool horror movie that sort of wore the pants of Silent Hill, but had nothing to do with it. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I think despite that, I think people have a, a fondness for it. Um, so I don't think it's really a matter of like, you have to respect the source material. I think it's just like, um, don't hire like untalented people. Because, you know, it's like you kind of want to just crap it out as like an exec. It's like, who cares? Just stick whoever on it. Um, 
and somebody who is at least like in that space, you know, somebody who could make mm. something very cool there, even if they're not looking to make a Silent Hill movie, you know what I mean? They still end up making a pretty cool movie. Mm. Yeah. And sometimes play in a sandbox, perhaps. Maybe there's a lot of people who just want to play in a sandbox of this world and build something new and interesting, like a unique approach to this IP or something or... I don't know. I don't know. I think um, the further away you get from it, the harder it becomes to like justify paying for the license. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, what if we did a Resident Evil movie that like had nothing to do with any of the established characters and is on the other side of the planet. And it's just sort of like a real world take on like this thing is this world event is happening. Then it's like, then right. just huck the Resident Evil out of it. And like, don't pay Capcom $20 million for the privilege of making something that has nothing to do with what they, you know what I mean? Like, why would we ever yeah. pay for that? That's crazy. And I, well, could it be case by case, like with world hunter or monster hunter <laughs> or whatever? Like they could just play in that sandbox, but it's not, I don't think there's a lore to it. Right. It's just a monster hunter has a lore, but I mean, I, uh, yeah, but I mean, that, well, that project I think was like financed by Capcom, like Capcom, like wanted mm -hmm. to make uh cause they were like, Oh, this has really helped our resident evil brand we want to make a monster hunter movie. And I think that was where the conversation started. And then you sort of see where it went. Um, mm -hmm. But who did they go to the people making the resident evil movies? And they sort of got what they asked for. True. Uh, Cause they liked the resident evil movies. They were like, we like what you guys are doing. <laughs> you guys, we like what you cooked up. They love Let's get every Paul. trip to the bank equal. They've, ne yeah. they've never <laughs> hated one. another check. But yeah. do y'all think it's more of a West thing? Then, because you got to think about it, if we look at other countries like Japan, India and stuff and how they produce their content, how they even treat their content going into it is way different than how the West ultimately handles business. And the West is more of a, OK, like we can have a character, but we will change this character if we want to. Or we've had a source material, but screw the source material. But if you look at like, let's just say Japan, they very big on respecting the source material respecting the characters of said material even like if you go to like indian productions like they are so i wouldn't say strict into the bones but they know like let's not disrespect like if we're going to sign up for let's just say a resident evil movie let's do do the characters justice or we're not going to do it at all type of thing it, so do y'all think it's more like a west mindset producing these types of bad content or mid-tier content or how do y'all look at it? it like that? it depends because Westerners have a very different mind, like you said, from you know other parts of the world. I think uh, when they actually brought in um, a lot of anime to the West, that they, they changed a lot of it, like not just like dubbing, but just like they changed like certain characters' names and shit. Um, yeah, it's 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 a totally different mindset. I mean, just look at the fucking the Japanese Spider Man. <laughs> it's a totally different. Like they, they the villains aren't even the same, and they they put like fucking Gundams and. Power Rangers and shit in there, but yeah, I think everybody perceives, you know, characters differently. Um, but yeah, what, what do you think, Akram? I actually want to pass this to Miller because Miller looks like he wanted to <laughs> say something. I mean, I don't think there is a different mindset in that respect. I can think of like a hundred anime adaptations that really shit on the source material. Or there's like characters that are like amalgamations of five different characters from the source material because they actually wanted to adapt this 30 book series into four episodes. You know what I mean? Like there's hundreds of those. Like I think I, I think it's an I think it's an issue of like rose colored glasses. Like a, you're so like removed from the production because of not only like the language barrier, um, but because of it sort of existing in a different media space, like they're just not being covered to the same extent. So you don't hear those ins and outs. Like one of my favorite uh, manga creators, the last time um, anything of his got uh, covered into uh, covered by anime, um, the director came out and said, I don't like this. Like in an interview, just said outright, like, I don't like it. I'm not going to end it the same way. I don't like the vibe. That's not, I don't care for it. And like, it's, it's the same thing. Like, I mean, I, I brought up the sailor moon earlier. I forget if we were recording or not, but I brought up sailor moon earlier. It was a huge legal battle there between the creator and, um, the, um, a, a toy animation who uh, did the anime because of how much it shit all over the manga and, and this sort of disputes over who owns it. 
And I mean, it, it's, it's actually really common. Um, I mean, we, we look at Dragon Ball like um, some would say that Super is not respectful of the source material. And it's signed off by Toriyama, but he just kind of cashes the check and every so often designs a character for them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it, I don't know that it really is that different of a mindset. I think just some of the more glaring examples are forgotten and they're not commonly in that discourse and that place that we access all of the time for conversations like this. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah, that's true. Like there's a, there was a four episode Fire Emblem OVA. That I think adapted, um, and maybe it was the first game, and it was awful. It was awful. It like there's several like multiple characters smushed into one. Um, I mean, it was kind of pretty, but it's been completely buried to the extent that they don't even copyright claim it on YouTube. They don't care. They've they pretend it never <laughs> happened. Happens all the time. <laughs> mm, yeah. like, again, the Secret of Mana anime is going right now. It's awful. I mean, that's true, but mm. you gotta think about it, like. When I was bringing the topic up, I wasn't saying that, yeah, in other countries, they don't ha- have the same mindset. It's more so they don't have it as aggressively as the West because of the West mindset and how they want to pump out content. But when you was talking, Miller, you got to think about it. Like something like Full Metal Alchemist. You had Full Metal Alchemist and then you had Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. The Brotherhood adapted the manga, the source material, straight from straight. And they even added little stuff. But Full Metal, if most of y'all haven't even seen it, I wouldn't blame you. But it was so detached from the source material that it got shitted on and forced to get that reboot. That's how much the fans was like, we, we're not going to stand for this. And I think like if people start speaking out more on some of these like products, things will change because ultimately, if y'all not saying nothing or affecting the bottom line, they don't care. It's like, okay, y'all complaining, but y'all still buying tickets. Y'all, y'all still giving this conversation. When y'all stop buying tickets, when y'all stop talking about it on social media, making a hundred TikToks about it, then y'all start affecting the bottom line. Then they may be like, okay, maybe we got to start changing certain things up. But yeah, it just depends on the mindset of who's looking at it. Okay, well, so we... we- I, I want to get to the part where we show um, some remedies that some studios probably could adhere to or use. Um, I want to go around and everybody gives their bullet points on how to make a very good, near perfect video game adaptation. So we'll start with Dylan and we'll move to uh, Miller and then Vanitas. Uh, don't worry so much about retellings i think retellings are are a very plastic way of adapting things i think focus more on the message of certain video games or or even just look at styles and see like if you could adapt that to a different character i think sometimes spin-offs work better um look at cyberpunk like it was it was a different character but it still conveyed the message of like you know classism um <laughs> I, I, there's a lot of things you could do. Just, I, I think it comes down to story, honestly. Um, but yeah, you could also say it's also the directors or the actors, or whatever. But I think at the heart of it, I think the story and focusing on characters is one, what's important. Miller. Oh wow! Just make good stuff. God. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't think there is like a a blueprint for good versus bad. I think it. I think it's really the the most important thing is pairing the right people to the right project. You know what I mean? Like really don't underestimate that it, I think a project can live or die in the hiring process, you know? Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know that that's, I, I really think that's the main takeaway. There's been great projects um, super promising that, uh, really, I mean, I don't know. Is, does this make sense to anyone else? <laughs> like to someone out there? Pro- yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, Vanitas. So for me is, it's come down to what I was trying to say. 
before, like before we started recording, big names doesn't equal a good film. And I think people need to understand it. Just because you got the big name actor doesn't mean mm. your film, your adaptation, whatever type of media you are producing, does not mean it's going to be good. Making something is like pieces of a puzzle. If the pieces don't fit, then sometimes it's okay to say, we don't got it right now. Let's push it back. And the people up top need to be okay and comfortable enough to be like, this is not what's going to bring in what we needed to bring in. Like you could have, for example, you could have a rock on 50, 50 movies. If like a good 80% of the movies may be trash because the rock doesn't fit the role. Sorry, rock. That's not a diss to you. I'm just saying before the rock fans come. But it's it's all about finding the pieces to the puzzle that fit. Don't just think just because I got the name or I got the director, things is just going to flow because it's never that simple. We all, we do content at a smaller level than some of these big production people. Even we need to look at it and be like, hey, this may not be fitting right now. So let's push this back and reevaluate things. And it it sucks because the people who write in this stuff, people who cast, they don't got the same time as we do. But I, somebody need to start saying, yeah, this isn't fitting. We need to stop. We need to push this back because the content that's been produced for the last couple of years, let's be honest, it, hadn't, it hasn't been what it's supposed to be or what they hyping it to be. So something got to change. The formula or something. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, and then you Akram. Yeah, I I just think there's bad films, bad TV shows. I mean, there's plenty of adaptations from novels, comics, everything. You know, I think video game adaptations get a lot of flack because, again, it's a video game. It's highly popular or widely popular. Um, And again, I think it's just a case by case basis. It depends on what you're adapting. Like I said, I said just tell your truth. Tell the the, the original creator's truth, right? Try to... not so much respect it, but just be on the same wavelength um, because then you'll have tonal issues. And then when it comes to characters, like, again, we we mentioned a lot of Resident Evil and stuff. It's like if you have iconic characters, you kind of don't want to botch that and like put them in a stupid situation. I think you have to have a lot of situational awareness. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really multifaceted. But again, that's with every adaptation. But I think... If you stay true to the source material, but you add something that you think will uh, add depth to the franchise, um, as Craig, Craig Mason did, um, then I think you're you're a true contender. I think I think it's going to be remembered, and I think everyone's going to be talking well about it. And it also suits the studios too, because they don't want to cancel, right? Mm-hmm. Look how much Prime has to pay for Halo, and that's already ass. But they like they have to keep going with that show right Mm -hmm. so yeah 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 i just want to add to that i think i think you definitely have to consider what you're what are you adding to an adaption that isn't offered in in the game itself right Mm -hmm. like like you said before you could do like a tv series and then you could explore more of the lore of a certain world or something or even like a movie you know it could be a big spectacle or right or like a big appreciation kind of like how you know, Sonic and Tech Pikachu did, right? Um, that's, yeah. So I would I would just say, say add something more to your story instead of just trying to play on nostalgia because I think a lot of adaptions try to do like what Jerome was saying just because you're a big name or a big IP. Um, nostalgia itself doesn't really win over fans. So I think you just need to add something else to that. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, is there, are there any other thoughts that you guys have before we wrap up? Oh, the Doom franchise is trash. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> I'm surprised <laughs> the we, Dune franchise. we didn't mention that. Doom, the Doom franchise is top tier trash. Resident Evil, top tier trash. Underworld, passable trash. Let's be honest. A lot of these adaptations are trash. If you don't like it, then sorry, but trash is a trash. It's no sugar coat and trash. A lot of this shit is just fun popcorn filler, but it's trash. Did you well, like the Angelina Jolie Tomb, tomb Raider? Passable trash. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Jerome. Uh, one man's trash is another That's what man's I said. treasure. Like, people right. may like it, but <laughs> if we look, if we want to be picky, 
shit is just trash. Like movies have been trash for the last couple of years. Like I say, even movies are trash now. Like a lot so. of stuff, a lot of media has been trash. Comics, mm-hmm. manga, series, games. It's just I don't know. It's most of this stuff just feel like cash grab. There's no soul in some of this production. So it's coming off as mediocre okay. or trash. It's no soul. Okay. Miller, why do you think that is? Uh, I think that's adulthood. I think it was always that way. I think you were just less attuned to it when you were younger. Like, I mean, it's like, you know, like the hits of the 80s. And you would think like, wow, music was so good in the 80s. Listen, it's all amazing. And it's like, no, you're listening to like 10 years worth of the greatest songs. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of garbage. Like, you know, you just you're not hearing that on the hits. You know what I mean? Like there's. There's there was a lot of bad shit coming out 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 100 years ago. Like it's just forgotten by time, luckily. And and, you know, the garbage of today will be forgotten in 20 years. Nobody's going to be talking about Monster Hunter 30 years from now, you know, like. But that's Mm. just it. The movie. So, I mean, I that's the test of time. We we did this whole thing without talking about Street Fighter or the Legend of Chun Li or Mortal Kombat. You know, like, <laughs> or yeah, or my, <laughs> like, I never watched it. So, <laughs> oh, the Legend of Chun Li is a crazy I saw the trailer, though. <laughs> movie. There's one fight sequence that takes place in a women's bathroom, and okay. the stall doors are flying. There's like heads getting slammed into sinks, and the the porcelain's flying everywhere. Um, it's a terrible movie. But that's mm. just it. It puts the cart before the horse. You know, I think that mm. maybe is the secret sauce. Maybe that's my advice. Don't put the cart before the horse. Like you really got to want to like if your intention going in is like we have this IP, let's make a movie. It's like, no, you're, you're probably you're rolling the like a hard dice right there. That's not going to work out so well. Mm-hmm. Like when you get a good script, you know, some interesting ideas, somebody wants to make something cool, then consider it. Don't just do it for the sake of wanting to do it. And don't get me wrong. Like that could be what the last of us is that maybe that's how it started. Let's make a last of us show and then let's hire this person. And, and it just happened to work out. But I mean, I I would be a lot more confident going in if you had a creator that was that that was what they wanted to do. You know, they were dreaming about it. They put their heart on the line, their career on the line for that. Because let me tell you, if it's bad, it won't let you forget it. And no. I mean, I remember once upon a time, like Mila Jovovich was like a pretty well-respected actress, you know, and model. Like she had a hell of a career. She's done a lot of indie films. She was looking at an Oscar one day and um, uh, not so much anymore. Unfortunately, it sends you on a bit of a path, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, uh, before we end, since we mentioned so much of Last of Us, I want Vanitas and Miller to give their two cents on what they're thinking about the show so far. So, Vanitas, what do you think of the Last of Us show? Bro, I'm a diehard fan. Like, I love the franchise. So, them being true to the games and everything, bro, it's amazing. It's like they just took everything I wanted and just put it on a big screen. Well, I mean, I, okay, I'm saving it for a big binge. Toward the end of it. Oh, oh okay. Um, oh. And I'm really excited for that. Like, I'm so excited to watch it because it the praise is just universal. You know, mm. it seems like they've got such a solid team behind this show. But not only that, executives that are so willing to let them go there. Mm. You know what I mean? And I, and that's the secret sauce, really, is that, that's a secret that sauce. willingness to just do it. You know, that's right. I mean, it doesn't always work, but when it does, oh boy, you get the last of us and it's worth there trying. Yep. Mm-hmm. But also I yep. will say the last of us is an IP or I should say game series specifically that is very ripe for adaptation. You know, you're playing a movie. So I, I think mm-hmm. it, th- like we talked about the super Mario brothers movie from the eighties. It, you know, they're, they're, uh, Video games are such an expansive medium and there are so many ways um, for them to tell a story if they tell one at all, whereas films can be quite rigid um, comparatively. So you really do need to sort of tailor the process to the IP. But for The Last of Us, they picked the right one. You know, stick to it. 
uh, stretch your legs out a little bit, but at the end of the day, go there. I mean, can you imagine this like on a different network? You know, it's, it's the right match between talent and IP and studio. That's, that's true. That's true. Well, uh, yeah. So Vanitas Miller, 2024, just do it. Uh, that wraps up our show. 2024. Um, if you guys, if you guys like this episode, please remember to like and share to greatly help us out. I'm a little bit discombobulated because Jerome's confusing me right now. <laughs> Sorry about that. But again, every week we do plenty of reviews um, and we are reviewing the last one. So we're going to have an after show once it finishes. So we're nearly there. Um, so again, please help your boys out. Uh, where can we follow YouTube? So Vanitas, where can we follow you? Can you can follow me on all social media platforms and on YouTube at Black Vanitas, B-L-V-K V-A-N-I-T-A-S All right, cool. And Miller. You can find me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Miller with eight M's. That's M-M-M-M, M-M-M-M, I-L-L-E-R. <laughs> yeah, if you just literally just type like M seven times, I'm probably going to show up. Thank so. God for copy paste in the description. Yes, yes. <laughs> really? yeah, yeah, link in the bio. <laughs> That's right, everybody. Uh, Dylan, why don't you take us away? Yeah, thank you guys in for, for tuning. You can check out our reviews for some of these adaptions that we've talked about already on our playlist as well. Um, and yeah, we have plenty of more content planned for the rest of this month. Um, we are reviewing The Last of Us, as Akram said, but check out our other reviews as well. And uh, thanks again, guys, for and Jerome. Just want to say uh, happy belated birthday since your birthday just passed. Thank you. Um, happy belated birthday. Thank you, Miller, for joining us as well again. Um, but yeah, thank you guys as always. And until then, thanks for having lunch with Dylan, us. is that your like sexy outro voice that you just try to put on <laughs> like the fuck out of here he always messes up my, my see you guys every single time he always says something see you guys 